Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome to another episode of DevOps with Zach. I'm Arshad Zakaria, and today I have my good friend Tulasi to share his past experience with one of the leading taxi food booking app in Sri Lanka about how Kubernetes made their life easier, how they manage the infrastructure with unexpected loads such as rainy days and some of the best practices. He's an associate tech lead at Cisco Labs, also a Kubernetes enthusiast. So let's get started. Hi Tulas, sure. thank you for joining. So how are you doing today? Doing good, Sack. How are you? I'm doing great. It's very rain. It's a rainy day in Singapore. So I was being inside the house, you know, <laughs> entirely. Oh, okay. It's good because of the COVID also, so better to stay home. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Thank you very much for joining with us because it's going to be a very interesting topic that we are going to talk. Uh, it's all about like um, uh, the scaling in Kubernetes and uh, a little bit about Tulasi, you know, he used to work for a, a, a leading um, a transportation or food delivery application platform. So he knows that how they... Uh, face these issues uh, of scaling uh, when there are high number of uh, customers or users. For example, sudden, for the sudden spikes, like, you know, suddenly there's a rainy day, people are not going out, they're going to order the, their food or they, they want to get the transportation uh, very rapidly. So, uh, Tulasha, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, so, uh, so uh, currently I'm working as a uh, associate DevOps in, uh, associate technical lead for Cisco Lab. Uh, Sri Lanka and before that I was working for other companies for like uh, as you mentioned for travel company you know over here and stuff like that yeah so I always ask this question about uh, with a lot of uh, other engineers as well so what's the definition of DevOps from your uh, opinion your, your side so yeah uh, so, uh, for me that DevOps is not quite uh, like uh, uh, something like we can def- define for like uh, w- one engineer or something like that. I think it's kind of a culture where you have to have like the all the developers, system engineers, so whoever the working in over here and be in their culture. So it's kind of in even most of the country in Sri Lanka, especially they are varieties like DevOps engineers, tech leads, associate DevOps, even in the interns. So I was thinking like, it's kind of a culture rather than having the engineer, so stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's 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 a that's a good point. Like uh, you always go the culture, the practices, right? Yes. Yeah. That, exactly. that's, that's that's really good. So let's let's go to the topic. Like uh, okay, now we are talking about Kubernetes. It's a very very vast topic these days. I think uh, we can talk about like <laughs> for days and days, like months uh, about Kubernetes exactly, because exactly. it's a very vast. Yeah. Area. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we cannot define okay we cannot explain Kubernetes within like uh, okay simply we can explain but uh, this is more into like uh, intermediate you know like we are going to talk about uh, the scaling like auto scaling so when before we go to the Kubernetes I think better we start with these uh, the containerization and the containerizing when when we personally I see in that uh, uh, some bad practices like you know all the packages like uh, for example if it's a uh, node application so, you know, all the NPM packages are cut, like packed, like unnecessary, like they're not doing the lean code, just pack the contain images like around more than one GB. It's very bad practice, right? So I have seen these, like it's, it's impact the cold start for the containers as well. It will take some time to start, spin up the container. So why don't we start from this containerization and the, the optimization of the containers? Exactly. Yes, so most of the... Uh, people are using like the all the unnecessary plugins and even they are using like the without using like the alpine or any other images they are just getting that the node or php uh container image and then build the and push into the uh, production so that will be make that the image will be more than 1.5 or 2 gb in space so you can do is like you can do the multi-stage uh, build over there and whatever the necessary things get into the running image and um, runs over there. So that will be making that the small image as well as the security footprint will be really good. And you can do so much things in that the running image. So that will be the great practice for like in production or whatever the use cases over there. Yeah, I, I like the part you mentioned about the multi-stage. Yes, uh, even my uh, previous places, we used to optimize like this, you know, 
uh, used to have uh, some Golang containers, you know. So uh, the previously, how happened is like the same container, same image, the base image, it's compiling, building and everything. The same, they're using the same container. So what we have done is like we used the multi-stage we we build some containers to uh, uh, do the building uh, the necessary part. Then for once we are ready with the executable, we just simply uh, create another container for like yeah, like you mentioned like Alpine uh, to the executable. So which is like very very small and the artifact is also storing in like a very small yeah that space. will be, uh, yeah it will be cost yeah of course it will be really easy and that the image is really clean and if there is any security. Yeah footprints and especially you can have them like the, you know what is going on and yeah so that will be easy you know i think um, the audience should if you're listening that if you're still uh, practicing like uh, just using one image and building uh, your application please consider about the multi-stage i think it's uh, really important and uh, i, I think, think that can... then, so, yeah uh, then some of uh, guys are using that the not using like the sim- simple application over over there, but uh, using like the couple of application like the database, web servers in the same container. So that makes also that the container is a little bit uh, larger, right? So if you can... Uh, exactly. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's why the, 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 they are breaking the container, that logic, right? So yes, exactly. Also, so MySQL, engineering, same container, what's the point, right? So uh, I, I, I think and uh, I think better use uh, for... Uh, uh, they can use persistent volumes, you know, uh, uh, to reduce the container size. There are so many options. So yes. I think uh, it's it's their own cake. I always tell this, or oh, they their own cake. <laughs> they have to bake their own way. So we cannot standardize. Uh, okay, you have to do it like this. It, it's, uh, it depends on the application. Uh, for example, if you're using, uh, uh, I mean, data intensive application like uh, high throughputs, high writing. So the container, we, we have to build the container image on that certain ways. So yes, yeah. Exactly. And I think also it's better to have like the, when it's come to the containers, you should have like the health checks, redness probe and stuff like that without doing so that the container, if the service is going down, you cannot have any, uh, what is going on over there. So if you have like the health checks and redness probe, Linus probe, then it will be easier to manage, right? Correct. I agree, I agree, I agree. So before we go into the uh, deep into this uh, Kubernetes resources, I think uh, let's, uh, uh, we can dis- uh, discuss about what the problem had and how you guys rectified those things uh, using best practices. So, uh, can you ex- uh, shall we discuss about that? Like before we go into uh, in deep the resource level. Yes. Uh, so from the start, uh, as you mentioned, that the our containers are really huge. Like the all the builders are building over there, and we were not using that they're running containers and running images. So uh, the first thing we have done is uh, we uh, go into the multi-stage over there and we most of the time uh, use in Alpine and um, rather we use uh, whatever the PHP or whatever the image over there since uh, we have seen that uh, some packages we install like uh, for the Alpine might not work for the some PHP versions. So kind of that. And when it's come to the Kubernetes, uh, for us, uh, we have pushed into the Kubernetes for uh, developer clusters, and we have observed running tests over there for more than six months. And over there, we have collected metrics and stuff like uh, where we can optimize the uh, clusters and what we can do this going on, like the scalability is faster and stuff like that. So I think uh, the main uh, challenges we have faced over there, like that the cost and scalability since that the uh, since uh, our company was a like a transportation company we are sudden spikes are coming over there and uh, from there we have to and latency should be really minimum so those things uh, uh, we want to have a system that uh, quick responsive and uh, which is not going to break anything so that is why we mainly go into the Kubernetes rather than having that the traditional VM, so VM groups and stuff like that. Yeah. Well, wow, that, that's that's really impressive. So, uh, is it okay if you can, uh, you know, define your resources such as you know, uh, define resource profiles, uh, deployments or namespace or other other related resources like uh, how how is the best practices uh, you guys were doing? 
So yeah, so when it's come to the Kubernetes, we can config many ways, right? So we can use yeah. auto, <laughs> auto node provisioning, uh, or you can use uh, uh, cluster auto scaling and stuff like that. Even you can use a uh, uh, vertical pod auto scalers, horizontal pod auto scalers, and stuff like that. So from my end, I think like uh, we have to get what are, what is the best option for a certain aspect of the application. If, if I say like that, if we are using like the uh, horizontal pod auto scalers for uh, like stateful applications, there is no point, right? We can use vertical pod auto scalers where you can have a one pod or two pods where the uh, resources going up for your own. So yeah, so kind of uh, things like that will be um, make your cluster really uh, uh, good one. So yeah, that is my point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what like, so we, we can do. Uh, we can uh, uh, satisfy those requirements in different manners, different ways. So we cannot just justify. Okay, you're doing this way. There are uh, basic principles we have to follow. Yes. Correct. Yes. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So when it comes to scaling, we we okay. When it's scaling, we should uh, let the scalers know you know what are the metrics we are going to monitor. It depends on the metrics only. We can do the scalings. Am I correct? So exactly, exactly. Uh, which metrics should be considered? Most of the time, I have seen okay. Uh, engineers they do metric like okay, uh, CPU, uh, the RAM. Uh, I use what kind of metrics uh, you prefer? Like most, uh, I would say suitable or like to uh, consider. Uh, yes. Or, so or like a, uh, I think it always depend on the uh, whatever the application you are using. If you are like having like the application where it's really consuming like the memory or CPU, then it will be easier to you define the uh, scaling for such a manner. So, but uh, in our case, it is not like that. So mostly we are using like the go line where that the go routines are going up, not the memory or CPU. So we were using like the custom matrix. So to scale up and scale down, which will be really easy like that, the network traffic, uh, all at the uh, go routines and stuff like that. Uh, I think it will uh, depend on the company or depend on the application itself. So, yeah. Yeah, that's true. It's, it's, again, it's depend on the application, right? Uh, if it's a, a data intensive application, maybe they are doing the different way. If it's a e-commerce, yes, they're doing a different way. Uh, yeah, uh, I, I, I would say like uh, for uh, the e-commerce platform, which I have like uh, previous experience, uh, we, we used to consider a lot of uh, check the, 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 the pattern of the, the users, like how much users accessing the site, like uh, for example, the particular URLs. Because uh, if it, when, when it comes to e-commerce, uh, uh, even you and me can agree, right? Okay, especially uh, when we go to the shopping, okay, we are going to shopping uh, and uh, we want to buy uh, some... Uh, something maybe electronic gadget maybe a cloth the food whatever so we are not going to for uh, for example like an electronic gadget or maybe uh, it can be a phone it can be a camera uh, it can be a laptop whatever uh, we go to different shops and we get the quotations and we buy right so same like when it's from the e-commerce uh, people visit the sites they want to compare the their, their, uh, the product prices uh, they they check the catalog so basically uh, from from those visitors only few will go to the add to cart and check out, correct? Even though we're doing that, yes, right? So, yes, yes, yes. Correct. So uh, <laughs> we also say doing the same. So uh, for for kind of an e-commerce, I would say like uh, not rather than your resources, you have to check, you have to keep an eye on your customers as well. For example, if you're doing a, a Christmas uh, email campaign for the Christmas sales, uh, for this year, you, you, you may have, uh, uh, I would say like 1 million users uh, for that month, December month. Uh, Next month it could be different, right? Yeah, because it's yes, 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 yes. increasing and you keep uh, improving your business. And in uh, such a uh, instead like these pandemic uh, situations, like uh, we tend to go to the uh, the online shopping rather than going out. Even my like everything I, I order from online, even my groceries here. Uh, that's a, one of the best things in Singapore. Like you can buy anything online; uh, they will deliver your step. So no need to go out. So like that. So we have to keep an eye on rather than the CPU and memory, I would say like the, the, those kind of metrics also. 
So yes. do you have any so thoughts about that? You what what will happen like the they are if you having that the requirement for like the CPU and memory that will never reach for the limitations but the API request right? So correct, that correct, will exactly. break the system yeah. yeah. And then so you can, there, there are other way, right? You cannot uh, overutilize as well or underutilize. You, you have yes, to be yes. so rather than okay. Uh, I have seen this uh, this issue like you know uh, when it's come to uh, the scaling up, they don't go in deep like uh, the metrics. Uh, I think it's, it's it's related to observability. I would say yes. So uh, rather than you know uh, doing good post mortems or like go deep into any issues, like find out what the root cause, rather than doing that, okay. Uh, let's let's add two more servers, or maybe uh, let's increase these uh, uh, C C five two X instance to a C five. Yeah, so instance. they never know that the even that they, the, they are know. having like the CPU memory leak or anything like that. So. Yes, exactly. <laughs> so I I would like to add one one scenario like uh, one of the interview interview candidate uh, told me this 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 uh, is one of experience. So basically, uh, they were doing some kind of uh, uh, a, a data intensive uh, application. And uh, you know the the they have for that their business it's it's related to like kind of a financial side so they have a BI side as well, so uh, the BI engineers they want to generate reports, uh, they were using AWS and for RDS you know that we have we have thing called like a uh, you know uh, the read only uh, the replicas read replicas you can add uh, number of read replicas that you can uh, add to your RDS instances so only the reads you can send to the read. Uh, replica endpoint and for the right you can send to the right uh, endpoint so uh, one one day they found that uh, okay they were uh, they noticed that RDS utilization is going high and uh, these engineers are d- d- doing some troubleshooting so site went down so they are doing this uh, post-mortem so while they're doing the post-mortem they f- uh, the engineers are really good that I was really happy that uh, when he was saying these stories very really, really interesting how they uh, how they did their uh, did their root cause analysis so they went like through out, in and out uh, even the code level. Uh, so, so some engineers have suggested that, okay, we have to add, uh, increase the RDS instance. So these engineers, the DevOps team and the SR team, they, they came up together and they, they told like, okay, this is not going to work. Uh, even though if you increase uh, the, this pattern, like it will, uh, uh, even though if you put the other instance size, it, it's going to be increased. So what happens is then they found out in the code that, you know, for the BI part, uh, they were accessing the right instance rather than the <laughs> read-only. So it's a okay. disaster, right? They are paying for yeah, read, yes. read-only read replicas, but uh, <laughs> the main application and the BI <laughs> application both access in the right instance. So that's one of the uh, bad things. So even though when it comes to scaling, we are talking about this scaling, right? Auto scaling. So be careful what you are doing. And uh, go for good root. Uh, I mean, root, find the root causes if you are having issues. Then you find the pr- proper solution like this. So when it comes to when we are talking about these uh, resources, I think uh, um, uh, in uh, Kubernetes, okay, we cannot forget about you know tains and tol- uh, toleration. So uh, I would say like for example, okay, uh, you have several ports, and some ports are some ports needs high CPU, some ports needs like uh, high memory. So you can uh, separate those node, node groups uh, to different instance types and uh, tains, can, tains and tolerations can help to identify. So uh, for you, with your experience, like uh, uh, how you can justify this? Yes, so exactly. So when it's come to the, uh, whatever the Kubernetes cluster, I will be suggesting to use like the not one port, uh, like the one port uh, node scaler, so like the, the node pool. So if you are having like the uh, high memory, high CPU, and some applications like that, and if you want to have separate like the stateful application in separate node pool, that will be the great. So then uh, you can even when it's come to the issue, you can easily uh, go for a, a post mortem and stuff like that. And especially when it's come to the uh, our company as well, so we were having like the applications we are going on high CPU, high memory, and there are a bunch of applications where we are having like the stateful applications. So then uh, we are having rather than having the same node pool, we are having like the separate node pool for each and everything. So that will make like our uh, scaling is faster, like 
you know like the if uh, we are having that the same auto uh, things in the same north pole then it will be disaster like you having that the no, uh, nodes spin up without uh, having any uh, like the cpu or uh, any other things like that so um, my advice is always check the what are the resources should be having over there and always uh, you have to like specify the uh, budget over there to uh, go for the capacity minimum capacity over there so that will be the easiest way to have the node pools and stuff like that yeah yeah that that's that's that's, re- that's really cool so uh, uh apart from these the kubernetes resources uh, uh what about the other like monitoring tools like you you guys have integrated like you know can be a uh, uh, new relic or datadog dynastry like uh, any other such tools to uh, monitor these uh, metrics yeah so we were heavily dependent on uh, uh, prometheus and grafana and other than that for the Sorry, uh, uh, I think I was talking about the enterprise solution. I totally forgot to uh, forgot to ask about the open source platforms. Yes. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so it will be easier. Like uh, when yeah. it comes to the Prometheus, rather than using that the data dog, we it's highly configurable, right? So you uh, even have the configurable options and stuff yeah, like you, that in the Prometheus. You can uh, do uh, your own uh, uh, like exporters, and you know, like you can uh, exactly uh, exactly. So papers, it's kind of you, you can rewrite the whole the. Prometheus. Uh, when it comes to the uh, in our applications, we were all re- rewrote the Prometheus over there to get the auto di- uh, discovery our uh, matrices over the Prometheus. So it will be uh, if we use that the data dog, then we never uh, done that in maybe in hundred lifetimes. So it will be easier to use open source. So. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, again, it's a very sensitive topic, right? Because uh, it depends on the, what you want, like uh, what you want log. So uh, that I have, I have personally used Datadog. It's it's really awesome tool. It's uh, awesome, yeah. right? Uh, but yeah, even though that, uh, yeah, yeah. So it depends on the company and what are the use cases and stuff like that. So it's kind of <laughs> sure, touching. Sure. Uh, I know, I know, like new really because the, the logs when it comes to logs, uh, they have to they have to pay for like a lot of storage, you know. I mean, yes. even like we have to storage. Okay, uh, how imagining ELK cluster, right? You need a lot of resources to uh, if you want to like uh, uh, index uh, big queries in a ELK cluster. You need a lot of resources, even for the storage data. So uh, I would suggest in that topic, you know, like uh, uh, know what you log when it comes to tracing. It's trace what you want and. Uh, Rather than you know, even uh, I have seen some in production, some engineers uh, pushing. I mean, uh, shipping the logs, even the infos. No, no need. Like, yeah, if you want, yes. It depends on like if a banking system, they want everything, right? Because for the audit, everything. Yes. yes. Yeah. I always suggest yeah. is uh, whatever the really matter logs should be over there. If you yes. are pushing like the info tracing and stuff like all the bunch of stuff to the elastic or whatever the logs, then there is no point, right? So I, I think uh, you collect the, uh, all the logs fine, but uh, you can uh, yeah like using log stash like you can uh, uh, you know uh, aggregate your logs and yes, you yes can, exactly yeah you can done like that because if for example like you know if you if you go, going to uh, do all the access logs like uh, ELB health checks uh, like it's going to be uh, increase your uh, uh, for your storage pricing. Yes, when it's come to uh, metrics and talking, yeah. So it's it's again, it's, it's it depends on. Uh, we cannot say you have to, you must use uh, Prometheus to get this. No, uh, even my personal experience, uh, I had I wanted to uh, uh, do something like uh, Grafana visualization. Then uh, I realized I don't need to use Prometheus. I can directly query uh, the database uh, to get the uh, Grafana visualizations. So depends on that. If you want to, yes, uh, yes. So I think that the, you never want to go for the traditional way right if you are having like the easiest way then it will be good to go over the, the easiest way and uh, if the things done is uh, the same way then it will be good to go right yes. so yeah. uh, i think like the uh, even for the uh, when it comes to the scaling best practices it will be good to have like the uh, resources requirement should be close to the actual usage, right? So the most of the engineers are having like the request for the ports even higher for the applications and they are wasting their resources. I have seen many 
companies that doing so like they, they are afraid to uh, like the application will be break or something like that and they are just uh, having like the mem or cpu or memory bunch of memory over the application where it doesn't need maybe it's going for the 10 milli cpu then they are giving like the 100 milli cpu so yeah, for I the ten minutes work, we have on the CPU, right? Yeah, correct. correct. Yes, yes. So, yes. so the, the, that's why, like, uh, for example, like, uh, for uh, if you're using like uh, AWS infrastructure, uh, the EKS is uh, supporting Fargate Fargate profile, so you can get a Fargate profile for SK, uh, for if you yeah, like uh, when you're talking about the yes, uh, the ten sand tolerations. So, uh, for the SK, auto scaling, you can just use the Fargate profile, and you know, uh, you pay what you use. No need to spin yes, up yes. and keep a, a node for <laughs> that. Uh, yes, so exactly. I, uh, uh, with the experience of this uh, uh, auto scaling in these PHP applications, uh, uh, for sudden spikes, I don't think none of the cloud vendors can uh, uh, support this auto scaling for sudden sudden sc- uh, spike because uh, yes. there is a warm up time to uh, spin up a new server. And yes, it's it's when it's co- compared to a few years ago, now it's optimized. Yes, but still for sudden spikes. Uh, it's not easy to get a new resource and create a Dan up and running. So that's the main bottleneck I have seen. Like, uh, yes. So, so uh, uh, the one thing you can do is like the, uh, you can be minimized like the, uh, from the uh, port image size and uh, stuff like that. So that will be. And the tools install in the pod, right? Uh, I, don't, yes. I, don't, I don't want like a Vimo Nano install in my pod. Uh, one more thing, like uh, uh, the content images you have to create immutable, right? I, I, yes, I have seen exactly. like after, after deploying, they log to the production container and they, they check a lot of things. No, once deploy it, that's it. If you want to change it or you check it, let's go go through the code level. Again, you de- redeploy rather than yes, uh, SSH go uh, doing that. So like you said, no need like install Vim or, uh, you know, cat command, no need those things, right? And I think uh, when it's come to the Kubernetes, it will be easier if your cluster is really clean, right? So without using any other stuff like over there and having like the injector ports and things like that, if your application is running fine with the one uh, port, it will be easier. So I think clean makes the uh, uh, auto scaling quicker and stuff like that. Yeah. Yes, uh, when it comes to SRE, SRE term that uh, they have these good practices. Uh, best practices like uh, the 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 artifact or the, the deployment should be small deployments. Yes, it should yes. be reproducible very in fast manner. So that's one of their release uh, uh, best practices. I think it's a different topic. Uh, we can have a chat another day. So uh, yeah, so just make sure your, your artifact like is very small. Two, three hours for uh, like the scale, yeah. right? So <laughs> what are the best practices? What we can do and stuff like that. <laughs> so I think, uh, thank you very much. It's, it's, I think time is up. Like, uh, uh, yes, it's, it's a very nice to talking to you, Tulasha. And thank you for sh- sharing your experience to the other, uh, uh, the audience. And yes, we were talking about some tools and pra- other, I mean, like we open, we can openly talk about other tools and yes, uh, we, that doesn't mean it's a bad tool or good t- tool. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Up to you. Yes, it's up to you. <laughs> Uh, what are tool you're using those tools are the tools are like they are to help and improve the the devops practices and process so feel free to try them and most of the enterprise tools are available for free trial like datadog uh, new relic uh, mm-hmm. line trace, those things and uh, when it comes to open source tool like uh, grafana prometheus you can it's free you can just uh, install and uh, give a try so thanks yes, again yes. to lasha so if there's anything uh, you want to uh, end up uh, this session you can uh, share with us and we can uh, uh, c- complete this <laughs> yeah so uh, for the beginners I would say like the when it's come to the Kubernetes don't push whatever the things others are doing you don't want to install measures or you don't want to in- install any other tool for uh, encrypting and stuff like that if you really want to do so then only do that one and always monitor your system metrics and stuff like that and uh have the resource limitations and stuff over there then that will make your cluster really good then it will really cut off your cost for the company as well so yeah and thank you Zach. i think um, it is yeah. really nice talking to you and uh, thank you for joining me for this one
Thank you, Tulasi, for joining today. In his Medium and GitHub, you can find more about Kubernetes, Terraform, DevOps, Elasticsearch, and more fascinating stuff. Please check the links in the description. See you soon with another episode of DevOps with Zach.